This is Yongno's brand new 12mm to 35mm f2.824 STM zoom lens for Michael Four Thirds. Yeah, let's go. This is Jimmy Chang from Red35. Today, we're looking at something rather interesting from Yongno. And this is their brand spanking new 12-35mm f2.824 autofocus zoom lens for Micro Four Thirds. And I say it's interesting because Yongno may be the only Chinese lens manufacturer that currently makes AF lenses for Micro Four Thirds cameras. And the last one I tested, the 42.5mm 1.7 Mark II, was very impressive especially when price is taken into account. Yolno has been in the Michael Four Thirds alliance for a few years. And if you don't know, they actually mix Michael Four Thirds cameras too. Just that they're not so outside of China. And yeah, basically these lenses are made for themselves and for their domestic market. But as a camera company, lenses are of course universal, especially when you are the only Chinese manufacturer to make AF lenses for Michael Four Thirds. So why not sell it to the world? So here it comes. Together with other AF Prime lenses that Yongno currently makes, this latest zoom lens is available worldwide. But shockingly, and unlike other third-party camera manufacturers, Yongno ambitiously targeting both the OM system and Panasonic's equivalents, namely the 12-40mm f2.8 Pro and the 12-35mm f2.8 Mark II or Mark III. I don't know the current generations, but yeah, basically the latest Panasonic 12-35mm zoom lens. And at retailing $430, can this 12-35mm f2 to f4 perform <laughs> while undercut its rivals? Well, let's find out. Just like Yongno's 42.5mm 1.7 Mark II, the lens is mainly built with plastic. Well, the only metal parts that I can see is the mount itself and those decorative rings on the lens. It certainly feels cheaper than any of its target rivals. No, there's no competition when you compare to OM System 12-40mm f2.8 because it is entirely built with metal. And even the Lumix 12-35mm 2.8 Mark II, uh, this plastic, feels slightly more premium and better finished than this one. And because if you look closer, you will see the lens barrel has some sort of uneven surfaces that almost feels like they are 3D printed. But that's how I feel by touching it and see by looking at it. In reality, it is a very solid lens and everything feels tightly put together. The zoom ring could be a little bit more smooth, but it works perfectly. And the focusing ring, well, it feels like an entry-level lens. But then again, it works fine. Both the AM, FM and macro switches, yes, you heard that right, macro, which I'll talk about later, uh, feels quite tactile and again, solid. And the included metal lens hood, well, they click into place assertively. And overall, while the build isn't something to write home about, it certainly feels well put together. At 318 grams and with a dimension of 94 millimeters long and 72 millimeters wide, Yongno's brand new 12 to 35 millimeter zoom lens isn't big nor heavy. But to give you some indication, it weighs about the same as Panasonic Lumix 12 to 35 millimeters 2.8, but 20 millimeters longer and 5 millimeters wider. However, due to the metal construction of OM's 12 to 40 millimeters 2.8 Pro. Yongno undercuts the weight by almost 20%, but its overall dimension is still slightly larger than OM's lens in its most compact form. So based on size, Yongno is within the range of its competitors, and its larger dimension may suit photographers with larger hands. So in terms of weight, 
is comparable to any of its rivals, and OM being the heaviest. So if you're happy with the 12 to 40 millimeters 2.8 Pro, you will be happy with Yongnuo's brand new 12 to 35 millimeter zoom lens. It's certainly not a deal breaker. Yongnuo's 12 to 35 millimeters has the largest filter thread at 67 millimeters. Lumix is 58 and OM is 62. And finally, there is an AM-FM switch. Though I much prefer OM Systems manual clutch with physical ends. But this is, of course, unique to OM slash Olympus lenses. So I won't count against Yonos because of it. And overall, I'm pretty pleased with the overall handling and operation of this lens. The first generation of Yongno AF lenses were shockingly poor, but the second generation, like the one I tested, improved significantly. While it can't match the speed outright against neither OM or Lumix, it can certainly deliver under most day-to-day -day tasks. This latest 12-35mm 2.8-4 employs the same silent STM step motor for focusing, but the AF algorithm has been upgraded. During my test, I found it to be very quick and accurate. In stills mode, single AF is on par with my OM lenses, and CAF is almost as fast as the 12-40mm 2.8 Pro, which is pretty impressive. In terms of speed, the wider the focal length, the faster it gets. Having said that, the AF speed is fast enough for most, but the most demanding photographers. Turning to video, I found the tracking speed to be adequate. It tracks fine without any hunts, but the speed is a little on the slow side. I need to turn the tracking sensitivity and speed up to match my OM system's 12 to 40 mm 2.8 speed. But then again, I didn't encounter any problem in losing focus or hunting. So well done, Yongno. And finally, it supports OM system's subject tracking, and I presume it will also work with any Lumix cameras. This is of course the crunch time in any of my lens review. Yongno's new 12-35mm is quite a bit cheaper than both OM and Lumix, but can it stand on its own when it comes to image quality? Let's have a deep dive. For the purpose of this test, I've separated into three specific focal lengths, 12mm, 25mm and 35mm, so I can get a good coverage and have enough data to summarize this lens performance at the end of this video. At 12mm, central sharpness is fantastic, and this is consistent across all aperture settings until f16 when diffraction starts to soften the image. Best sharpness is f5.6. At both 25 and 35mm, the widest aperture is f4, and with that, the sharpness is excellent already, matching any modern digital lenses I've used. But things can be improved if you stop down to 5.6 again. Diffraction performance, again, will start at f16. I have tested multiple shots and the results have been consistent. At wide open 2.8, at 12mm, the edge is soft and lack of contrast. Things will improve, but the softness remains until its peak performance at f8. But then again, it won't match the central sharpness. Diffraction once again killing the image at f11 and smaller aperture settings. At 25mm, f4 performance is acceptable, but still soft and things will only improve incrementally until its peak at f8. Still, like at 12mm, the peak performance still can't match the central sharpness, and diffraction happens again at f11. Pelian is usually the weakest point in any zoom lenses, but surprisingly, Yongno somehow manages to keep everything under control. In fact, I think 35mm is the best performing focal length by far. At f4, there is only a hint of softness and low contrast but things almost matching the center by 5.6. F8 is optimal, and you will get pretty even consistent results across the entire focal plane, with only diffraction starting to soften the image by F11. I've been trying to move a mountain on my way to get to you. Skinny dipping in an ocean blue. It's an uphill kind of battle to make you see my point. This 
may be the weakest point of Yonos new 12 to 35 mm zoom lens. Dark corners are clearly visible at 12 mm from 2.8 all the way to f8. Yes, f8. <laughs> okay, you won't notice much after f4, but if you do a side by side comparison, you will see the fall off. And even at 25 and 35 mm, Vigne is prominent at f4, but improves dramatically at 5.6 before completely disappear once again at f8. But one thing I'm quite impressed is that the color consistency across the entire zoom and aperture range. Yes, strange it may seem, but I've seen some lenses where color shifts a tiny little bit by different focal length and aperture settings. Quite interesting. In contrast, flare control is excellent. Yongno also claims to have nano fluoride coating to help protecting your front elements from water oil and dust, similar to that used on Olympus Pro lenses. Well, that's something to shout about, right? <laughs>25mm. Distortion is worse at 12mm. With visible barrel distortion, and needs somewhere between plus 10 to plus 15 to correct in Adobe Lightroom. It is non-existent at 25 and 35mm. But, yes, a big but, that Yongno doesn't rely on lens profile to correct any distortions. So, kudo to them. And that means in raw state, Yongno actually performs optically better than either Lumix and OM system. This can get personal. Bokeh is always a Marmite affair. But as you can see, the Bokeh looks quite nice, but very vintage. However, things will turn south when the lens hits the light. Specular highlight Bokeh looks quite busy. And this has somewhat affected by the vintage looking characters of the lens drawer. So again, it really depends on whether you dig that look or not. Oh yes, this lens has a dedicated macro mode that works really, really well. Minimum focusing distance with this mode turned on is only 11 centimeters at its widest end and it works incredibly well. And this is a built-in feature I actually found myself using it quite often. This feature also works in video modes too, and I find myself using it far more often during recording, as it allows me to get a product up close if I want to show some details. To my surprise, I think it is actually pretty cool to have a dedicated super macro mode on a general zoom lens. As a general zoom, I wouldn't say it's bad, but breathing, it is a problem throughout the entire focal range. Also, as a general zoom, it does a pretty darn good job in keeping everything nice and smooth. Focus transition is impressively slick, and despite a slow CAF tracking speed, it works well, and if your camera supports AF adjustments, you can also bump it up a bit to compensate if you wish. And overall, it is a great general video lens for casual snappers and vloggers. All in all, Yongno has impressed me with their first Michael Forthus AF zoom lens. Is it better than more premium offering from OM System or Lumix? No, absolutely not yet. But at half the price, almost half the price, it is hard to argue that this is a bad lens whatsoever. And it does everything well enough to stand on its own and virtually no absolute direct competition in this price range. So what's my verdict? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or go ahead and buy it? Before I answer my question, let me tell you, if you already own either the Lumix or OM Systems 2.8 zooms, then a the quick answer is no. This lens won't give you more unless you fancy that super macro mode. But if you don't, then things get interesting. If you should definitely consider it or even shortlist it, 
because at this price, Jungnor still undercuts OM Systems' brand new 12 to 45 mm F4 Pro. Though the latter has superior optical performance over this and also fully weather sealed. But again, Jungnor has that super macro and almost as good optically. Finally, if you just bought a new camera with or without a lens, but you want to get a better all round zoom lens that allows you to get up close and personal, then Yongnoi has you covered. The optics is better than most kit lens on offer and it is definitely more flexible and has a 2.8 aperture at the wide end. It's quite a unique offering. <laughs> so that's it folks, I hope you enjoyed this review and let me know your thoughts on Yongnoi's new AF zoom lens. I am personally quite impressed with the company who also continues to invest and develop new micro forward lenses despite the odds, continues to offer autofocus on all the offerings at affordable costs. And now, what's next? Maybe a new 42-150 or maybe even a 100-400? I will be waiting eagerly. <laughs> anyway, you know what to do now. Thumb if you like this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking and of course, Michael Four Thirds. Peace. Right, welcome back to my bonus section and thank you for watching. And first, what do you guys think of this? The 12 to 35 Yongno lens. Well, I am personally quite impressed with it. And of course, you know, I already said it is not matching or can better your current Lumix or OM system pro lens. Definitely not. You can't really match it optically nor in terms of performance, outright performance. Um, but it is an impressive offering if one's on the budget, for instance, or maybe even as a second lens or backup lens, for instance, because it doesn't cost that bomb. $430, it may sound a lot, but it's not really for a, you know, considerably a higher performing lens. Not highest performing lens, but higher performing lens. It's definitely better than kit lenses. And to be quite honest, you can easily spend $300 on a kit lens from major manufacturers. So this is a little bit more, but does give you a 2.8 aperture at the wide end and also giving you that step motors and also super macro mode, which is quite handy. Um, the, overall, I am actually quite happy about this lens and uh, I'm also really, really grateful for Yongno continue to invest and develop AF lenses from scratch for Michael Four Thirds. And I'm not joking because there aren't many manufacturers doing that. And really, really good that they continue to do this. And I, I am, oh, it's really bright now. It's really great that they, uh, they keep doing this. And I, I think it's really, really cool. Anyway, and I uh, hope you guys like this. And I've got other lenses to test. And, uh, oh, it's a bit dark now again. <laughs> uh, so if you guys want to continue to support this channel and remember to subscribe, spread the word if you can. And uh, I will still try to do my photo wall, which I already promised at the beginning of the year uh, due to my health and I have to stop a lot of things and slow down my pro uh, productions. Um, I, I remember I saw some comments before asking me about you know, how I'm feeling now. Um, to tell you the truth, um, a little bit better, but my breathing, my shortness of breath is still there. And uh, so it's still kind of affecting me, my day-to-day -day kind of activities that I can't do too much uh, heavy stuff in a way, um, but I am trying to get back to normal and trying to exercise. Perhaps this is something that I have to get used to, maybe improve by exercising more to walk out a little bit more. Um, so there are a lot of things I'm actually planning, it's just waiting for the right time to do it. But in the meantime, reviews continue and I have some uh, kind of educational stuff that I have been planning for some time and hopefully I can implement it later this year. But in the meantime, you can join us live or our weekly chat with Rod Lawton on Wednesdays, our Red Hot Talk. We talk about photography, we talk about gear, we talk about anything in there. So if you want to join us live or watch us uh, on demand afterward, you're welcome to do so through my YouTube playlist or even YouTube podcast in the States only for time uh, for the time being. And uh, other than that, uh, we are exploring other avenues uh, uh, like in terms of podcasting. So you may hear from us later on, but stay tuned. We'll let you know as soon as I can. Anyway, you guys have a great day and I uh, hope you guys enjoy yourself and keep shooting. Keep shooting.
See you later. Bye for now.